Hi, I'm Jenya Gershman, and I'm an artist and educator. I started my art career, I remember the exact day. I was actually 10 years old. I created a little drawing in response to a film that I watched, and I was so overwhelmed, so I didn't know what to do, and it poured out of me. I used very cheap uh, markers, and I drew this little kid drawing, and I showed it to my mother. And my mom said, oh, you're an artist. And that's how my career began. I have so many students that come in and say, I've been painting for 20 years, but I'm not an artist. If you have an inclination to express yourself, you are an artist. It's not judged by the years of your experience, how much you sold your work for, or what gallery showed. It's the state of being and how you look at the world. Starting a painting for me is very difficult. I paint extremely fast. I can paint a painting in a few hours and be done with it, but it's the gestation period, the carrying it out, my inspiration comes from interaction, with human interaction. Uh, my main ingredient is not oil on canvas, it's empathy. Sometimes I even want to put in a label, painted with oil, paint, blood and tears. It's all about relating, feeling for the other person, letting them come through on canvas, erasing yourself and allowing your subject to speak to others. In the last few years, I realized that the true purpose of art for me is not just to make it, but to make a real change. So I try to, with that empathy, take it past my canvas, raise funds for those who need it, and help uh, tangibly through my art. For me, oh, I think one of the biggest challenges uh, of making art is the fact that you, of course, if you're making art, it is not true that you're making it for yourself. You're making it for an audience, but the audience might not be readily available. They might not even been born yet. It could be way past your lifetime that someone will find meaning and resonance in your art. And keeping that in mind and keeping that real, knowing that for sure inside you is very challenging. They try to um, measure art in terms of value for schools. Like, should we be teaching art? Is it just as important as math for children, for instance, right? What is the value? And my answer to that, to all of that, is that it has no purpose. It is absolutely useless. The only thing that will happen, art has the capacity, the only thing that has the capacity to save our world. I think it was Cezanne who said that the painting is never finished, it is abandoned. I think it's interesting because the painting is a trip. It's a journey. And as every journey, it has ups and downs. And I always say the trick for the good art is to exit when it's on the up. So never fear the down because you're always getting through, you're always getting better, you're always bringing something. It might pivot down, but just wait for it to go up and then get off that bus stop. My definition of success is not based on the value that we can put in terms of dollars. It's not what an important gallery you showed. Connecting on the deepest possible level to one person, that's all I need. My gardener was outside my studio and my door was open and he stopped blowing the, you know, the leaves and he said, may I come in because I see such beauty. When he walked into my studio, he took off his hat as if he was entering a holy space, like a church. And he just held his hat to the chest and he looked at the art. And then he just said, it's valleys and gardens. I see pools of water, and these were portraits, but he related to these portraits in the way he sees nature. And to me, that was, I said, you know, if any critic would write that about my work, I'd be thrilled. The duration of who you are as an artist, how long you have in your art career, is not defined by what you make, but your status of life. I always tell my students that painting paintings, that's just an extension of being an artist. That's almost like the, tangible, the visible, but it's the way, the quality of your life, the way you look at each other, the way you look at the world. In a sense, you, be, you become distilled to one organ. Well, maybe three organs. <laughs> well, the organ of the eye, because you really become the eye of how you see the world, the organ of the hand that renders it for others, and the organ of the heart that is full of empathy to connect those three. And so I think that never st stops. Even if I was to stop making art, I would not stop being an artist. My advice to the people that are just getting started out there and or the ones who've been painting along but not quite sure of what they want to do, um, it would be the similar to a security officer I ran into yesterday. And we started talking and he said, what do you do? And I said, I'm a portrait artist. And he said, I'm a very, very bad portrait artist and I really don't think I should be doing it. You know, all the other security guards, he said, paint here and they're phenomenal. 
And you know, when I compare myself to them, I'm nothing. And I said, never compare yourself to others, never ever. And in fact, with those other people that you think are great, if they looked at your art, they'd probably be jealous because you have something authentic, something of you that they don't have. So the only comparison can be you and your own art, not anybody else. So be confident. And as my favorite quote, as you go to my academy uh, website, Genius Art Academy, uh, it's by Van Gogh. And he says, the scariest thing is to look at the blank canvas. But the only way to silence the voice I cannot is to paint. And that voice will be in immediately silenced. So do the work. Don't compare yourself. Feel empowered by the art. You're making a difference in that invisible person who needs you.